I have really made my profession a very good feeling, driving me my passion, which is possible, and urge the people together who would like to today and share the name of my journey with you all, which will help you all understand uh, what this whole connect is. So we have all heard, you know, it's written right here, a healthy mind, healthy body. Sound mind and a sound body. We've been hearing this since childhood. Okay. Even when I was studying in a medical field, uh, I was when I learned the definition of health, of good health, the way the World Health Organization defines it, it said it's not just absence of disease, but it's the presence of balance in mind, body, and spirit. I was excited because I had this thing since childhood that I truly wanted to be a healer, not just a doctor. So I was excited that you know, I'm studying something where I will get to know the root cause and all the connections between my body and spirit. And as I went through my medical training, it became, it became abundantly clear to me. They taught me everything about the anatomy, down to the core, down to the microscopic level, the ultra microscopic level, the electron microscopic level, nothing was left. I learned everything about the physiology, the biochemistry, I learned everything about the physical aspects of the disease. But I hardly ever was taught anything about the mental aspect of the disease. So much so that I didn't think that any of my professors knew the answers. And when I started going into clinical medicine, the spirit was totally left out of it. Okay. Which modern medicine is still trying to track what is it that keeps a body when a person dies. They haven't been able to track it yet. Esoteric stuff. We know it, we believe it, but they haven't been able to. They say, life's out, electricity gone, we don't know where it went. So as I went into the clinical training, started going on on the boards, taking down with my professors, starting hearing about cases. What was very obvious was when these cases were being discussed, there were cases that were very similar. The disease was similar, the diagnosis was similar, the treatment was very, very similar, but the outcomes were diversely different. Diversely different, okay? Like I'm talking night and day different. And as a young medical student, obviously the question came to my mind and I would ask my professors, why is it that with the exact same diagnosis, the exact same disease, one person gets better, the other gets worse, and a third does not respond at all? And back then, in the early 90s, uh, I was told that it's chance, it's bad luck, it's genetics, it's compliance, some even very, very, what I would call religiously inclined professors would tell me, Bak Pura Chalta Yuska. Samay Pura Hai. Wo Jina Nahi Chalta, Dil Nahi Hai Yuska. Would hear all kinds of diverse answers by the person who are responding. Never satisfied me. And I started looking at, is there something above and beyond what I am being taught in my textbooks that really goes to the core of what disease is, of what illness is. Because remember, illness is not just the presence of disease, illness is the absence of wellness. It's a really complicated topic. But when you come to realize it, that in every single disease that we deal with, modern science, modern medicine, tries to tell us that the problem is at a receptor, at a cell, uh, in an organ, in a tissue, and it comes up with the best possible drug for it. The second thing that disillusioned me in modern medicine, which I have studied incessantly for at least 20 to 30 years in the beginning of my career, I had the blessing of practicing now for 14 more years beyond that, both in America for about 10 years and now in India for about 7 years. Was that everything that I was being fed, fed is the right word, by the pharma industry about disease, 
was something that they would have to many a times retrace their steps on. They would have to backtrack themselves. So not long back, there was this wonder drug called a COX2 inhibitor, COX2 inhibitor, which was believed to be the panacea for causing, without causing gastritis or acidity, that pain killers are notorious for doing this drug was believed to heal that and reduce the pain. And it was used in F Trident Center for Chronic Diseases, Chronic Living Syndrome, Rheumatoid Arthritis, Osteoarthritis. Before you knew it, they found out that it was now causing cardiac disease, cardiovascular disease, and a black box came on it. Same thing happened with the multi billion dollar industry in which they were using antibiotics for a flow of metabolism. Blockbuster drugs, multi billion dollars all over the world. We believe that it kicked the best bugs, the super bugs that were out there. A few years later, we know people are getting tendon rupture, tendonitis. Reason why I'm highlighting these things to you that just thinking about the body has not led us very far from what we already knew several thousand years ago for that matter, with regards to health. And the reality is media promotion does not highlight these things, but the benefits are highlighted. You look at everything that happened in medicine. A few years back, monounsaturated fatty acids were bad, polyunsaturated fatty acids were good. Now the whole cholesterol story has changed. It's not about diet, it's about how your liver is functioning and how your genetics are. Point I'm trying to make is that in modern medicine, every step that I was moving forward, I realized that we were missing the point somewhere. And in that missing of the point, it became clear that unless we understood the mind behind the body and ultimately the spirit behind the mind in that layer, if you want to think of it that way, we would never understand illness or disease completely. So in that journey, what essentially happened was I started looking at alternative sciences just as much as I started looking at modern sciences. So whether it was yoga, pranayam, pranic healing, reiki, you name it, I was looking at all the sciences, but I realized that even within that, whatever was being taught was being pigeonholed, was being restricted, the way we realize religion. Today, if you want to walk, if you want to go from Mumbai to Delhi, you would not walk, you would not take a bullet car, you would not take a Koda Kari, you would probably not even drive, you would rather take the train or the plane. Which means we have in the modern life, in the modern world, upgraded our systems that way. But yet we look at religion from a very ancient perspective and expect it to solve all our issues in today's day and age. Suggesting that there needs to be a new view, a new perspective for bringing spirituality, mind, mental health, disease all aligned together for the modern day for it to work. And in this process, when we look at what the source of disease is, what, what was mentioned, I like to do root cause therapies. I realized that in any disease that we are dealing with, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, call it, gives us many opportunities to intervene long before the disease fully sets in. Long before the disease fully sets in. So much so that in ancient texts, Samari Purana Shastra will be written the body is the battlefield of the games that our minds play. The body is the battlefield of the games that our minds play. And so in this sense, if you look at hypertension today, they track it down to suppress anger. You take depression today, they track it down to suppress anger and a lot of other emotions. You take arthritis, you take thyroid disease, you take every disease where someone has looked at the mind-body-spirit connection and you recognize that there is a mental component to the disease long before the physical component went haywire. And in this process, 
when you start analyzing what is going on with our own health, we recognize that we have not taken what would be ideally called preventive steps. So when it comes to the physical body, I'll start with that. We all know now that there is something called pre-hypertension before hypertension sets in. We know that we have defined parameters for that. We know how to check it. We now have genetic testing, which I do for my patients who come to me for preventive care, who know what I do. Families where the father has hypertension, heart disease, uncle has hypertension, heart disease, the grandfather died of a heart attack. The younger generation, when they are waking up, they realize I should not wait till I have developed hypertension. I should not wait till I figure out that 70% of my right coronary artery is blocked and 90% of my left circumflex artery is blocked. I should do something well before that. And there are genetic predictors that are available for that. There are genetic tests, there are blood tests, there are blood markers, suggesting that prevention is to be the best way. It's better than cure. Because cure is a very long journey. Prevention tends to be a shorter journey, a quicker journey, and far more effective. So it's much easier to prevent a disease than it is to reverse a disease.